Hey, hey there. Just a quick video to um, explain why you're seeing a few um, uploads recently. That concerns a, a parade. I know that most of you guys are probably uninterested in that, but I actually made this those for our community, really. Uh, there was a parade, 4th of July parade, that had involved a lot of the local kids and uh, family members and whatnot here in uh, Arlington. And it was a very, very long video, and like friends of my, um, my daughters in high school, plus there's um, an exchange student. Well, it's not an exchange student. It's, uh, it's a program where it's very much like an exchange student. But uh, a, uh, a person from, a teenager from Northern Ireland came in and is staying with my nephew. And they're doing kind of an immersive program in Texas for three weeks. And they were both in the parade, marching with, that, with, the, with their group. And then uh, there was uh, quite a few people that we knew that were in the parade or had some part in it. So I decided to video the whole thing uh, with the uh, 360, the X4, Osmo. Not Osmo. <laughs> the Insta360 X4. And uh, I'm shooting this on the Osmo. Uh, anyway, and the parade was the longest parade I've ever been in in my life. <laughs> or not been in, but been a part of. And uh, it lasted just short of two hours. And I couldn't believe that shooting it in 8K, um, it took two batteries or a little over, well, a battery and a half. And I couldn't believe it didn't overheat on me. That, that was a shocker. It was 90 degrees outside. I was in the shade though. And there was a slight breeze, but it really did shock me because uh, I'm shooting this right here in 60 frames per second on my uh, Pocket 3, and I've never had it overheat on me, and it just overheated a second ago, so I had to restart. But, long story short, uh, I uh, made that video, or those sets of videos, since it was so long, I split it up into four different sections. I did that for friends and family and uh, people in the neighborhoods and whatnot. So, don't let that be uh, something that turns you off from the channel. I don't plan on doing a whole lot of those, unless it's just something special like that. Um, but one thing I was going to talk about maybe a little bit was, uh, and I don't know if anybody else has had this problem, but I actually took those videos from the uh, 360 camera and brought them into... Uh, what did I bring to? Oh, into DaVinci. And, you know, the only thing I was going to do is color correct with it. And the reason for that was is I overexposed it a bit by accident. And so I just kind of wanted to pull down everything and make it look a little bit better. Uh, and so what happened was, is so, you know, it's a 360 video. I put, I did everything I needed to do. And when I exported it, uh, they were... Uh, very choppy. I mean, it was like there was dropping. And well, let me put it this way: if I took the video and I watched it in VLC um, the player, it would uh, drop a frame about every one out of every five frames. So it was just chopping really bad. So I wasn't certain what was going on there. And then when I actually had uploaded it, it would uh, look smooth if I watched it in Chrome, but if I watched it on, in a Safari on my Mac, it was choppy again. And half the time, it would just stop altogether playing the video and the audio would come, would uh, play, continue fine, but no video, it would just stop. So that was rather frustrating. Uh, and these files, mind you, were about there was one that was 20 something gig there was one that was 34 gig and one that was 63 gig or something like that these were huge files and it took me two days to get them all uploaded and so after that I was pretty disappointed and so I just I was just deleted them all because they weren't going to be useful 
and I turned around and I decided, well, okay, so yesterday afternoon I decided I'm going to redo these, but I'm going to do them in Adobe Premiere, which is something I haven't used in forever, and I bought a, a subscription just to try it out, um, and I used to use it all the time, though. Anyway, it's changed. <laughs> I used it to do the color correction, and it actually did a really good job, and the exports went just fine. So, and um, I actually recorded at a slightly slower uh, bit rate, but not much. And they both came out fine. It didn't have problems with uh, stuttering or anything like that. And also, this is something just, just to note, when I exported it from uh, DaVinci Resolve, I had to run the, the uh, files through a... Um, a little app to add the metadata back to tell it that it was a VR or, or a uh, 360 video because the exports directly out of DaVinci didn't show them it didn't tag them as such it might be just something I'm doing but uh, once I did that you know I had to do that extra step oh I'm about out of gas that's not good um, so uh, but when I did it from Premiere, the option was to tell it that it was a VR video. And, and uh, when you did that, it came out directly out of the export, out of the media encoder um, with the metadata that is necessary. So, anyway, I just, I'm just going to cut this short. I've got to run to the gas station, obviously. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to just let you know why the parade videos were out there and kind of give you some of my experience with my exporting of those uh, with the two different applications and kind of query you guys and see if any of you all have noticed that when working with 360 video and um, DaVinci Resolve causing causing that sort of issue. You know, a lot of times I don't bring it in there, you know, because if I expose it right, I don't really have a reason to bring it in there unless I'm going to uh, try to edit it down. And those are typically reframed videos and not full 360 immersive videos so this was the first time I tried to do color correction on a 360 video a complete immersive video and uh, that was the results that I had so if you've got any tips tricks please share them with me I'd appreciate it talk to you later thank you bye